of a three cheers for the bonus that we're going to get. With nowhere was the contrast greater than the United States. In 1932, Washington was under siege. The Capitol building was surrounded by unemployed First World War veterans from all over the country. Their only assets were the bonus certificates they'd been given on leaving the army, which promised a cash sum years later. They wanted them paid off now. I came to Washington to get my bonus, and I'm going to wait for till I get if I have to wait till 1945. What's it that brought you to Washington? Why, well, to beat the undertaker, spend the money before the undertaker gets it. I know who's made this country worth living in. It's just you fellas. Look. <coughs> Makes me so damn mad a whole lot of people speak of you as tramps. By God, they didn't speak of you as tramps in 1917 and 18. No. <laughs> Take it from me. This is the greatest demonstration of Americanism we've ever had. Pure Americanism. President Hoover had to decide what to do about the veterans when the Senate rejected their demands. The marchers had stayed on, camped out in central Washington. It's war. The greatest concentration of fighting troops in Washington since 1865. I knew something was going to happen, that they might be attacked. And uh, I had a press card, so I passed the police lines, and then I saw the soldiers advancing into the camp. And when confronted with this, the men all stood there and said, stand firm as long as you can. And uh, they started throwing tear gas. I'd never seen anything like it. They systematically went down the line, burned up all the tents, and all the possessions of the people there. I was thinking of Herbert Hoover when this happened, because his election was in three months. I thought this would be, uh, would be the finish of Hoover. The orders of the president must be obeyed, and the roaring flames sound the death knell to the fantastic bonus army. In the shadow of the beautiful dome of the capital of the United States of America. That summer, Americans were rallied by a new message. This is more than a political campaign. It is a call to arms. Give me your help, not to win votes alone, but to win in this crusade to restore America to its own people. Roosevelt ran for the presidency, saying the Depression could be beaten. What's our campaign slogan, Sissy? Happy days are here again. Good, that's right. The American people gave Roosevelt a landslide victory to make him the first Democratic president in 12 years. He offered a new style and a new confidence. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. I was there, I was there at the inaugural. He had a great voice and he had a way of putting words together that were made you feel this man means something to me this man is going to help us but what he would do i didn't have much of a sense about it all i don't think anybody did but it was a great speech i shall ask the congress for the one remaining instrument to meet the crisis broad executive power to wage a war against the emergency as great as the power that would be given to me if we were in fact invaded by a foreign foe. In 
matter of weeks, Washington was transformed by the rhythms of the New Deal. New agencies were created, new officials hired. The administration tried to kickstart recovery and tackle unemployment. Sixteen major measures were put before Congress and passed in the first 100 days. There was immediate help for American farmers who were facing ruin. Beef was fetching only two and a half cents a pound. The Stoops family suffered from the low prices on their farm in Oklahoma. President Roosevelt came on the scene, and what he done was that he would pay the farmers for a cow because there were so many cattle and not enough uh, uh, hay nor water, and so uh, he would pay like 30 or 35 dollars for a cow, and they'd kill them. And they'd pick a good one, and then they would take it to the canning factory, and they would can this meat. And, uh, and then they would give it to us, you know, not always your cow or anything, and we'd get so many cans of this meat. When you don't have food, and somebody gives you food, what else could you think <laughs> but that he cured for you? New York City, federal jobs for thousands at the rate of a hundred a minute. 138 Green Street, New York, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Municipal building, Mother Hall, Brooklyn, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. People were put back to work on schemes that would benefit the country at large. My wife told me, where you're going, 12 o'clock. I said, I got to get on that line and get a ticket, and here I am. So if you see me, I'm not lying. I've been out of work for three years. I have a wife and three children, and I, uh, I'm tickled to death to have a job. The Works Progress Administration was one of many new government agencies. There were jobs on roads and public buildings. Men were sent to remote areas to do conservation work. Temporary forester Mansell Milligan had been a schoolteacher until his county in Tennessee ran out of money. I just wasn't being paid. I couldn't get any money. So when I got that job for two dollars a day, a dollar bill looked as big as a saddle blanket. That's how big it looked. Because there wasn't any money moving in the country. I need not emphasize for you what this period of work and healthful surroundings with pure air, sunshine and adequate food has done for these young men, giving them confidence in themselves. It made all the difference in the world. I was a different fella. I had a bright outlook. I felt like the country was going to get back on its feet and everybody was going to be successful. I knew it wouldn't come overnight. Seen a typical American home. Time, the hour for another fireside chat by the president. Johnny, wait at your bedtime. Hey, what time is it? Hey, Pop, could I have a nickel? A nickel? Don't bother me. Get on the bed. I want to hear President Roosevelt. Roosevelt was the first president to use the new power of radio on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I stand all for by my refusal to accept as a necessary condition of our future, a permanent army of unemployed. I do not want to think that it is the destiny of any American to remain permanently on relief roll. I heard the president speak over the radio. It gave me such a thrill. I am sure everyone must feel the greatest confidence that what he has done and what he is going to do for the country is for the very best of everyone. Fear is vanishing, and confidence is growing on every side. Hey, Pop, hurry up! 
Hold on that nickel now. Nickel? You come down here, son. Here's a dollar for you. 